we, we came from a hyper tiny country, which is almost a joke compared to Australia. It's called Belgium and the capital city is uh, Brussels. And since five years, uh, passive house became mandatory. So it's, it's like it's in the code. It's for everybody, whether we like it or not, even in retrofit or refurbishment. So that's the idea. And when we mention passive house for people who don't yet know, it means that compared to business as usual, you can have like heat in demand reduce uh, for more than 90% and for electricity and cooling is maybe a reduction of 50-60%. Uh, How you do that is based on building physics. This is what you do as architect, the, the envelope. So that's too easy. It can be complicated, but can be very easy. So this is when you see at the scale what I mentioned. So this is Belgium. So you see it's really, really uh, it's smaller than your cities. Um, the same if I take Sydney uh, and our region, it's uh, even smaller than Sydney, you see. So again, that's a fantastic appealing uh, land, uh, skyline you have all over your cities. Our skylines are not that appealing. I would say not sexy if I talk European. But the, the funny thing is if you go through and you see closer, you will see that all over you have buildings that are passive house or zero energy buildings and, and districts. So this, re this really becomes that's normal day actually for architect today. Um, and we see all kind of design, uh, even in retrofit, high rise, uh, hyper high end, uh, even in parametric design and so on. So, and, and for all kinds of destination. So that, that's really important, can be affordable housing, broadcast, whatever. And since we did that in our, in our country, we had a huge impact on the gas emission drop. So. Maybe no one remember that, but in 1992, we foreseen to, we should achieve a drop of 12% and we achieve minus 20% with such a policy. So it means, and no one knew that, that it's, it was possible. So we can go even beyond. So now the, our government said, okay, now we're gonna target by 2020 to be completely CO2 neutral uh, uh, country. So this is now spreading a bit all over the world. Even Japan, they, they just recently vote uh, a law that they want to be also CO2 neutral by 2050 in Japan. Uh, here we have in New York and in Vancouver, in Canada, they both decide or say, okay, we're going to go with to, to, to the same uh, target and with the same path uh, as we did in, uh, in, in Brussels or now it's spreading all over Europe. So you see, it's, it's really possible to do it. Well, I'm not going to spend so much time. The only thing important is, okay, we architects, just architect, but without, in practice, we have in source all the building physics, parametric designs, so engineer stuff, but view from the point of, of an architect. So we have three offices. One, it's in, it's in Europe, of course, Central, uh, East, uh, West Europe. The other one is in, uh, in Lisbon, that's in the South of Europe. And we have one in New York, that's mainly for, for the US. Um, so we, we start very soon to do this kind of passive house building, but at the same cost than business as usual and sometimes cheaper. And we didn't know also that it was possible to do it. So if you can do that, there's no excuses. So this is what, what you should spread also as information. So I'm going to show you a small competition. Well, it's small. Well, it's not that small for us. It's 40,000 meters square. You can see it here. So it's a, it's a district. Um, nearby a Calatrava train station where we had to do a childcare office, affordable housing. And there we propose, okay, to go not only to passive house, but also to zero energy. So you see in terms of design, it can be very, very cool. I said that because sometimes you hear engineer that you have to suffer to be sustainable. So yes, you can, but doesn't have to absolutely and we are now in construction and the thing is this is that was one of the first competition where we were facing hyper big stars like Jean Nouvel of these uh, superstars and we discovered oh my god you can beat them <laughs> it was a shock for us so it's like falling gods but they don't do sustainable that's why too bad for them. So you see, so we can do, and, and this is very important because when I'm also teaching, so this is the more important is, okay, it's nice to have this building that's gonna be super sustainable and we can, I'm gonna show you to where we can go, uh, but they can be also hyper high hand design. So you don't have to sacrifice the design of the look of the layout of what you want, it's possible. So I don't know if 
some of you guys know this because we are already at the last years of the IPCC that starts 30 years ago. So every two, three years, they were launching a report, how far we are with the global warming, is it coming from the sun or from us, and so on and so on. So now we all know, well, 90% of the scientific community knows all that is due to us. <laughs> so it's our, our task to change. One of the things is we use these um, mitigation scenarios they, they propose for 2050 or 2100, uh, yeah, to see um, how it's going to be the climate and try to see what we can simulate with dynamic simulations and so on for the behavior. One of the things is in this IPCC, because it's also it's uh, mixing uh, dozens of countries all over the world uh, and scientific and so on. It's not the important, the important information is not exactly what they put on it, it's that just they, they take you the attention, it's time to do something. Because they wrote there that if we have that 1.5 increase scenario of uh, degrees of all over the planet, we're going to have a sea level rise of maybe 60 centimeters. So we, we all are going to say, I, I can live with 60 centimeters. The thing is, um, a few years ago, there is a, a very famous journalist in uh, The Guardian, it's a London newspaper. He, he published uh, um, some uh, research done by uh, James Hansen. James Hansen is, uh, is a guy working for the NASA and they were doing in the, in the North Pole, like um, they were taking uh, ice, sample of ice, very deep sample of ice to see the evolution of, uh, of the Earth. And they discovered that we had already a flood in our planet it was uh, uh, 3.5 million years ago because we had also an increase of two, three degrees 3.5 million years ago. And they discover when you see the, the bubbles of air that are trapped in these uh, very big uh, uh, glass uh, elements that actually the sea level rise was not 60 centimeters as the IPCC foreseen, but it was 25 meters. So it happens once. It doesn't mean that's going to be that. It's going to be maybe worse. The thing is, some people, I taking that very, very seriously. We have that in London, in, in Holland, in some part of, of uh, even in, in, in North America. So these are typically of projects that they based the, the design out of the possibility that you can have like two meters of, of flood. Uh, so you see this, maybe it's, uh, you know that it's from uh, Jack Ingalls. That's a, a kind of small, uh, affordable urban rigor that you put as floating, uh, uh, floating uh, houses, I would say. And that's his uh, oceanics project again, uh, which resists storms and so on. And talking about ocean, you know, already we every year we, we, we kick the record of uh, heat waves and so on. You are in Australia, you know well with what you're talking about. But this, the, the not so funny thing is also that we discovered that there is more and more dead zone on Earth. So it, it's um, when we mean dead zone, it means that the total chain of life is completely disappeared. This is what you have on the moon, actually. The thing is, this is spreading. This is in in, uh, in New Mexico. So you see, it's, it's really time to do something. And when we say 25 meters or 1.5 degrees, what does it mean? So if you take North Amcove, so we have here the, the bay and uh, you see here the, the tea gardens um, uh, place, we will see that if, if you put one meters of sea level high, this is what we're gonna have. If you put two, three meters, this is what we're gonna have, five, 10, and then we reach 25 meters. So it means maybe it's time to do something and uh, we should do it. And when we say it's the future where well, it is and it is not. So remember maybe in, in September, of course it was due to, to fires, but uh, in, in uh, September, 2020, three months ago, we had these photos on the left that's from uh, in San Francisco and on the right, that's the movie Blade Runner. Uh, I don't know if people know this movie, but, and again, here above you have these, uh, San Francisco pictures and below it's a Blade Runner. So it's really like the future has come to us now. And if I take the heat wave you had in Europe, we have the huge heat wave you never had since ever. Um, the funny thing, well, again, I said funny, but it's not. When I took the IPCC scenario that was foreseen in 2050, which is in blue here, we see the temperature we had this year with these two heat waves that was foreseen for 2050. And it happened this year. So. Are, are we are we that far? My goodness. So that that's the question. So we put the name of, of one solution, but there are so many, so many. It's it's try to make um, how can you make like um, the the permaculture, you know, the permanent city. How we can make development that will not only limit the the impact on the planet or on the environment or on the climate. It's but can we go beyond and can we even regenerate it? It means if you don't do the project or 
the, the, the development is going to be worse for the planet. So you have to do it. But then this regenerative design, you can call it regen, permacity, whatever, this how, how to do it. Um, and we discover something as architect that there are so many tools that are available, just like that, for free even. Like one of the best one is, of course, you have the PHP and uh, and the Woofy, both are a static Excel um, and all this is small soft who can help to predict how it's going to behave the building. Um, but we use a lot also Grasshopper, which is a, a parametric design, so we can write any kind of script on Rhino and put whatever kind of information you want to even reverse the the, the path. So instead of you do a design and you control, is it okay or not? It's try to use these tools to refuel the narrative, to really reshape the design. And there are so many of them. So there's no excuse anymore. So the, the, the thing is, we discover also that as architects, we are so much in your and We know nothing since 50, 60 years by um, putting everything at the same temperature with uh, engineers. We don't know anymore how, how to use uh, like natural flows and so on, but we can use these tools to, to help us again. So, and because we are, we are, we are that nuts, that stupid, we, that, that's, that, that gives an impact on, 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 on the world and on our, our comfort and so on. So that's the idea, instead of trying to be just sustainable and try to do something, come on. The idea is to go beyond, we have to regenerate our, our planet. So let's be a bit pragmatic. So I was talking about climate, that's one way of approaching, because also since, since we start in our country and we start doing projects a bit here and there all over the world, well, not all over, but almost, um, we use uh, that Copen classification, it's one of the oldest one and it's uh, updated every year. So we are here in Australia. So that you see is climates are all over spread all over the world and they have different kind of characteristics. For example, if I take the Brussels climate, um, we have the same in, in some part of Peru uh, and even on, on the very south of, um, of, of Australia, we have the same condition for rain, a bit more solar radiation, but temperature is, is, uh, is temperate. So that's typically passive house, uh, on a larger scale, of course, uh, a, a building, uh, an office building here also, it's, it's generated by parametric design in Luxembourg on the same climate. Um, I'm gonna come back on this a bit later. That's a, an urban design. Um, again, uh, another part which is more complicated because on the Gold Coast, you have almost the same situation we have in New York and have few projects there where we have extreme cold uh, in winter and extreme hot and very humid in summer. So we have to face with that. Uh, but it, it's the same in this part of Japan, for example, here or, or in, in, in Brazil. So again, the, the project we did here in Europe, that's a huge competition. Uh, but the solutions, how to treat the envelope, what we have to face to on a day by day is going to be the same cases wherever you are in this zone, in this climate zone. Uh, again, if I take uh, Kinshasa, so we did the Bejan Embassy in, uh, in Kinshasa, in Congo. Uh, and here we have that, that famous tropical bell that goes all around the world from Singapore, even from Cairns, of course. Um, and again, uh, in Mexico and, and the north of Brazil. So there we did, we use this also parametric design to try to shape and put these blinds, not only because it was a painting, good looking, whatever, but also to see how many gonna have uh, natural lighting, we're gonna have inside or daylight autonomy, et cetera, et cetera. And to have a building without uh, air conditioning. It's just airtight, so to don't have humidity inside. So it's possible. That's done two years ago, uh, and it's the first passive house in Africa. Again, we have the Mediterranean, but of course, if you go to Perth or nearby San Francisco, you have exactly the same conditions. So that's a project in an hotel we do in Lisbon, uh, well, in Porto, and this one is in uh, Lisbon, another office building. And we just finished here in the in Rabat, it's in Morocco. It's at the entrance of the Mediterranean Sea. It's, um, it's a small embassy again, Belgium. Uh, I'm going to come back to this. And then this is the last uh, example we have here. It's uh, we are doing a project in Ilo. It's in Arizona, and uh, we face there a climate which is extreme. It's very harsh. It's uh, we had 50 degrees a few months ago. Um, so that was one of the hottest points on Earth. And there we're going to do development where we are going to have 400 houses that are going to be completely self-sufficient, off-grid, even in water. So. Again, if you can do it in Kinshasa or in Ilo, in Arizona, I'm sorry, everywhere else in the world, it's penis, it's too easy. So being, being sufficient, that, that's really the next step beyond just a passive house, 
complete self-sufficient, we discover actually what's going to be complicated, it's water, how to manage, but we can do it. So that's a small project we are doing uh, in-house with uh, our investment from our region. It's almost finished here. We're going to put it on our roof and try to monitor uh, how does it take to be in a completely self-sufficient pod, it's a small living pod, and the idea is to then spread them all over, all over well, the planet. So I was talking about this experience we had in with that embassy in Morocco. So it's the Belgian embassy, and it's completely, again, self-sufficient. But that's a fixed building. Uh, we just delivered uh, one or two months ago, so we hope it's going to work because ambassadors are coming here now. So it can be, be even high-end design and um, yeah, off-grid, even in water. So this kind of Permacities project or try to regenerate the environment or be self-sufficient, we have them a bit all over all over the world, even in retrofit, in very large scale retrofit. So another project that I'm gonna show very quickly, we use also these tools um, uh, for a uh, sport complex that we are starting now in Luxembourg, start one years ago actually, and there we decide uh, instead of doing a building, let's build a hill. And under the hill, you put the big equipment. So actually, you're going to give back to the to the community, um, well, a Greenland, because Luxembourg is flat. There's no mountain, there's nothing. So we create kind of a hill. So one side of the hill, it's the building. And on the other side is, is this actually. And it's going to be completely CO2 so neutral. That's another project uh, I'll show you very briefly. So it, because you can put on Rhino, uh, on Grasshopper, any kind of script, we had to put 150 housing on a, on a complicated plot uh, in the forest. And we put some rules, just rules we wanted. That we want that every man, big window of the living, don't, we want that they don't face his neighbor, that you have as long as you much free space. Another thing we ask to the, to the machine, it's, uh, we put another script that we want to be at a minimum 10 meters from one each other. So we want to have every kind of orientation, but mainly, East West stores, for example, to have a uh, free gains. And with this, with this generate kind of a thousand of possibilities and it gives us what are the best solution. And then you just fine tune a bit. That's something you cannot do it by hand. It's no way. It's no way. It's, it's too crazy. So another thing uh, before I'm going to end with a last example of a project, it's a small, uh, uh, I don't know if you know the equation of the water lily. That was uh, shown years ago by a very, very famous uh, mathematics genetics. Um, it's called Albert Jacquard in Paris. And he said, look, imagine you have a lake. And in this lake, there is a virus that we have water lilies. And they double every day. And here we have a month. So that's the last month. OK, that's the last day of the month. So let's say we arrive at the end of the month. And the lake is completely full of these water lilies that they double every day. So the problem is, if that happens for real, the lake is gonna die because there is no more oxygen that goes into the water and so on. The question, and I ask that every year to the students, what was the day when we had only half of the lake full? So normally I give you some minutes to answer. Most of the students, but I would also say that, I was not, not that clever, my goodness. I would say, oh, it was day 15 or 16 maybe, but it's not, it was day 29 because they double every day. And when was the day when it was only um, um, a quarter of a lake? It was then 28. And, and, and like that, when it was an eighth, one eighth of, of, of a lake. So this is the situation we have now on Earth. We are very late on, on Earth since millions of years that Earth exists. And some people say and stand up and say, oh my God, we're gonna all die. There's only three days left. And some others say, ah, oh, come on. We have plenty of space. We're gonna be okay. But they, they don't understand that, my God, it's almost over. So one may also say, but look, we can have a plan B. Imagine we have another planet, but how many times, how many days more you see you can even with another planet, only one more day, because remember, this water really doubles every day. So you see, this global warming and all these climate effects and so on, I know that for some, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> is it real? And from some other, it's really, 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 yeah, this is an art installation. It's not really someone in the water. So I'm going to end with this one. That was the first time we used this kind of, uh, all these tools to, to refute the narrative, so to reverse everything, to really to, to help us for the design. It was a huge competition in Paris. Also in Paris, you have La Seine, the big river across all the city. And we had to put uh, 400,000 meters square. So it's a million uh, 
uh, meter square, which is crazy. So what we use there, we use uh, a lot of tips and tricks like of these tools of uh, parametric design in Grasshopper in between deep uh, inner city of, of the suburb, we put uh, a kind of uh, an in-between uh, city block design based on two, three rules, very stupid. We said, why can't every single apartment of people who's gonna live there have a minimum two to three hours of direct lightings all over the year, even in winter. So with this, it generates a few designs and uh, we could only use this one and then apply them the way we want, of course. So it's kind of a sequential, it creates kind of sequential and movement of, uh, of a skyline that grows up the more, the more you go out of the sun. So, and it really, it was based on this simulation that it generates this design. Another thing we use, I just give you just one trick, is how to face the water uh, sea, or the sea level rise. Here is in the river La Seine. So we use a kind of um, hill uh, lift, lift the, the ground, not only to put parkage and cars for the moment, because in the future we know we're going to have almost no more car, but just free machines that comes to, uh, with the nap and take you from one point to another. Um, and that frees the, the public spaces. But by doing these kind of hills, it's also a storage for water. So this is how we use this design and it helps. So we have a, a kind of a progressive skyline going up, but also a progressive ground going more up and up and up and up. So that was how we came to, to, to this design, you see. And the result when also we put the calculation in CO2 emission to see how much we're gonna save versus, versus uh, business as usual, we discovered that the totality of the CO2 emission of the project could be completely compensated. It means that this tiny project compared to the big city of Paris would catch as much as CO2 as all the green park squares uh, that are all over the city. So it's really like, like if, if, if you give this to, to Paris, um, and I'm going to end with this one. Ah, it's not this, the right one. I'm going to show you the other one. Just a moment. I have to go to the... What was yeah the CO2? And I'm going to end with this. So I have so many moves going on here. All right, here. Yeah, okay, is this one. So you see these automatic shuttles that we have already here and there in Europe. Okay, so thank you.